Hi, and welcome to an Organized Chaos podcast. I'm Bobby Quarters. Chaos is here with me as well. We just wanted to thank you for watching. Yes, hey, Bobby. And hey, and while you're here, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. You could follow me on, on YouTube as well as Chaos and the podcast channel, which all three of those channels will be streaming this very show you're about to watch. All these counselors start dropping dead, left and right. Heinous killings. Turns out, kid, that kid who drowned the year before, his mother came back to that camp and exacted revenge. In the deepest, darkest hellscape known as Ohio is where our little satanic shit show story begins. The story of Jack and Annie. Well, the story is more about Annie than Jack, but we'll get to that. Rough night, huh? What the fuck? Who the fuck? What are you doing in my house? Get out! Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Todd Balthazar. My name is Balthazar, and I am your demonic concierge. My head is pounding. I can't deal with you. What I wouldn't do for an iced coffee. No, oh, I can provide you with whatever you want. All I ask is a favor in return when the time is needed. Damn. This is Professor Xavier's School for the Gifted. We X-Men learned something very special here, Jubilee. How to control our mutant powers. Your violence will solve nothing. We must use our special gifts to bring peace to mankind. Better that we die on our feet than live on our knees. born from chaos and sometimes when you're lost you're found we have been waiting for someone worthy of our attention captain incoming Change is the essential process of all existence, Commander Burnham. Go! You chose to do the right thing. Being a great cost to yourself. You helped start a war. Don't you want to help me end it? Hey, Hello. Bobby, how's it going? Good, how hey, are you? I, I'm doing good, and uh, I don't want to leave Wayne for too, too long, so uh, we have yeah. a special show for everybody. Uh, we got an interview today. Um, we're being joined by Kyle Rayburn and, and Ben Rieger. You got uh, it, nailed it. Nailed filmmakers it. for, nice. for wow, I got a name right? That's that's a first time. We're going to have to Probably, man. That. Nice, buddy. <laughs> uh, but, they are the filmmakers behind uh, Satanic Soccer Mom from Ohio, a movie I stumbled into during Horror Hound uh, last Most weekend. Too. That I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, it was Same. a lot of fun. Yeah. 
Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Hope you don't mind. I shared the link with Bobby so he could get That's updated. Dope, no, of course. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. Well, uh, Bobby. I'm also very happy to see that you guys uh, actually in the opening featured something that is almost a trademark of our state. Like known to people here, but like, you know, outside of it, they don't believe the sign is real, but it does exist just yes, like us. Yes, it does. <laughs> I, and it actually got a fantastic reaction and it really made me happy. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> So you guys did actually check out the uh, screener link that I sent you, so yes. you saw it in its yes. entirety. Perfect. Good. Awesome. Yes, Good. yes. I, I, saw, I saw all the stuff I missed, and yeah, yeah. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> I really enjoyed it. It is, yeah, no, I, I, like, it's one of those movies where it's like, um, I kind of get Clerks vibe from it, like Supernatural Clerks vibes, if that makes sense, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. You know, just kind of the style, and, but, like, it, there's still a flow to it, and, uh, like, there's a passion behind it that I thoroughly, Absolutely. thoroughly enjoyed. Yeah. Um, Perfect. You guys want to talk about uh, what inspired you? <laughs> yeah, um, kind of just the title itself was the main <laughs> seat of inspiration. Yeah. We we knew that we weren't going to just stop with one because that's just kind of like cheating a little bit and like having one Dorito. So I thought of the title and we decided just to put it at the very end of our first movie, Night Work, as kind of like a, you know, coming next Wednesday kind of thing. Like we're going to be back with another one. And we didn't have a script for it. We just had a title. And I sort of challenged Ben to uh, write his very first sort of fully realized uh, script. I think you had written yeah. some in college. Yeah, I've written some shorts, but yeah. So yeah, uh, he, he kind of put all the, the potatoes together. I added a little bit of meat. Whatever was, you know, added on set stayed as well. Um, but the real inspiration, once we started getting down to it, like, oh, we have to actually make this because what else are we going to do? Uh, we, um, Weeds was a big inspiration. Uh, Nancy Botwin and that show. Oh. Uh, the way she takes on these, like, really big characters and egos in her life while trying to, like, keep a family together after this, like, loss. I was just curious, like... If if a demon stumbled into Nancy Botwin's kitchen, how would she deal with that? I, I just love the surrealism of the idea, I think. And I think that's really where a lot of it comes from. Plus, you know, my mom was single raising kids. So I saw a lot of strong traits that I wanted to kind of, you know, plug into the character. So I think that's kind of really where it started. And then, you know, we did like a short kind of session of... A, B, C, middle, beginning, end, mm -hmm. and then he kind of just went at it and hammered it out. Also, uh, we're both ch children of the 80s, so, mm -hmm. you know, obviously films, of course, are a huge influence, but uh, we talked a lot about the movie Little Monsters. Sure. Was, uh, was it also a big play? Oh, definitely. Effort, right? For sure. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah I, yeah, I can see a big inspiration in the yeah. makeup for Beelzebub. Um, yes, <laughs> yeah, <definitely>. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Bobby, what, what did you have for him? Uh, well, I love everything about the idea. And most of the time I kind of found myself like with uh, especially all the soccer field stuff, just kind of looking around like, wait a minute. Do I know that park? <laughs> Maybe. But I, I definitely recognize the layout of the house because like we had, I'm guessing that was like an MI or a Domin or a Dominion home area. <laughs> so it's, it, yeah, it's actually my house. I believe it was like a Fisher home from like. Yeah, yeah OK, because, yeah, there's we have those all over here. So I was like, I yep, know that. Exactly. It's, um, all, it's an Ohio house. Man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I, I really just love the whole idea of it. And I definitely see the how you mentioned uh, you got inspiration from the show Weeds. I could totally see that now. Yeah. And, I, I just I thoroughly enjoyed every bit of it. I was laughing throughout all of it. Awesome. <laughs> Very that means that, thank you. That 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 yeah. makes me feel thoroughly like entertaining. Definitely. Good. Definitely. No, there, there, yeah, no, there's there's so much that I I just it's one of those things where you just stumble into something and it's like, wow, this is this is this is special. I really yeah, enjoyed it. Um, I had walked past a booth that had the name on it, and I remember even doing a double take, like, wait, what? We got a lot of yeah. those. Man. We got a lot of people coming like, "What is that?" Or like, like, "Oh my god, did you see that?" Like, "Yes." Right. It's like, "Is that a band?" Don't talk like, to what? us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't eat. Yeah, I, I don't recall seeing your booth, but yeah, I, I know the name. When I was looking at the schedule, the name, I was just like, "That's an interesting name." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, I just talked to uh, Jacob, who is the director of Compression. Uh, they won seven out of the eleven awards they were nominated for. They just like crushed it. Um, oh he was just like, you know, we were kind of ex exchanging um, hellos. Yeah, and he just said, "I want you to know." 
you hands down had the best title of the festival. He's <laughs> like, when, I, when it popped up, he's just like, man, I, you know, I wish that was mine. So I think it's just like little sparks of madness like that, that will like literally motivate us to no end. We have, um, obviously the one we're getting ready to do um, that's coming up, but I also have another one that I want to do just because based off the idea and the name alone, it's just kind of one of those things it, we've already got ourselves in this deep. Might as well just see how far down the rabbit hole we can go. And I feel like there are shifting tones coming up sure. compared to night work, satanic, and then what will be, he's coming to get you. Um, and then we'll, what will eventually be the next one. I think we're exploring a lot of fun ideas in our super indie space. Mm -hmm. So, uh, do you want to dive in into your next one? You don't have to say too much, but like, no, yeah, no, we'd we love to say as much as we could. Okay, um, okay, so go for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, Use my platform. Um, <laughs> obviously, Satanic Soccer Mom was kind of like a, a creature feature, sort of you know, if you will, of of X Files proportions, uh, and when you put it that way, this one's more of like a revenge tale uh, with a splash of martial arts and voodoo and rock and roll. Um, so it's kind of it's, it's called He's Coming to Get You. And it's about a couple who go out on just like a typical date and unfortunately they run into some kidnappers um, and they shoot George, steal Asia, and a, a, wit a witness sort of sees the whole thing go down and she uses a little bit of black magic to resurrect him. And he has a set of parameters to follow to get his girl back, but he's basically invincible and is a voodoo pain sponge is what we're calling him. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, um, we're going to incorporate some things we've never really done before. Some, some uh, bloodier gags, some, you know, some neck snaps and some yeah. uh, chest bursting. And we're really trying to spread a little bit of, you know, of our wings and try to open up some new ideas yeah. and, and tell a different type of story. I think a little quicker as well. I think in our first two, we do a lot of just kind of static camera work. This one, we kind of like to move it with that. Maybe do a couple, maybe do multiple cameras with it as well. So, but it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Multiple iPhones is what he meant yes, to say. Yeah. Yeah. Your cameras, cameras are so fancy. All of our films are done on iPhone prints. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Which is, I mean, that's impressive too. I mean, you know, yeah, just yeah, yeah. the technical, the, the the limitations of an iPhone. It's it's weird because the iPhone actually gets like phones get good video, but like it can be tough to struggle with because uh, there's a film quality that it's weird. Um, sure. But I think it's a uh, it's impressive how you guys are able to pull it together. So like you're able to look past that because you're just having so much fun with the movie. Yeah. Um, it's it's quite awesome. Um, okay. What, what caused you guys to, to get into doing this type of thing? It was literally for me before I had really hooked back up with Ben. We, we graduated from the same high school just a few years apart and we had known each other back then, but yeah. we really hadn't connected in probably like 10 or some That's, years. Yeah, probably, yeah, probably 15 plus years. Yeah. But I, I went to Whorehound to meet Michael Madsen is how this whole thing started. Uh, my oh, buddy wow. said, Hey, I don't know if you know this or, or not, but Michael Madsen is going to be in Sharonville and like to me, he's like Elvis Presley. And so I went to meet Michael Madsen and then I sort of got wrapped up in the swirl of the film festival. And I think one of the first things I saw was Brian K. Williams' Time to Kill. And this was like, this was his first movie. Um, and, you know, obviously he went on to do like Space Space from Outer Space and Jesse Super Normal Regular Average Day. But that's what I got the bug. Um, big time there because it was it was right in my backyard. I was only about an hour and a half away from Sharonville, so I knew that this was potentially something that I could kind of tap into and just meet people and have talent, you know, that was in the area and just kind of start making it. Um, I had this idea for the first movie we did because I worked for a construction company and I had never heard the term night work before, and that's very common in the construction industry. People just say night work all the time. You know, it's it's night work. And so I had this idea about these two clumsy, sort of drunken, um, haphazard, super normal, super paranormal, like, um, you know, guys going and fighting things that go bump in the night. And here we are, <laughs> two films later. Nice, nice. Um, I've, always, I've always been as just a huge movie geek, always. And then when Kyle had this idea for, for Night, we kind of we connected. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, absolutely. Send me the script, read it, so let's do this. But with the parameters of let's build this as well. Cause I have some ideas and we'll kind of learn together how to make movies is what was pretty much what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that sounds very cool. Um, so good. Thank you. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I just I just love the idea of uh, just people getting inspired to make movies. I think that's really cool. Um, something I always wanted to do, but I didn't. But <laughs> I think it's cool <laughs> that you guys doing it. Get an iPhone. Yeah, that, that is true. That is true. That's something I'm realizing as I'm getting older. But uh, yeah, there's always still time. Um, but it's, it's cool that you guys are doing it. Um, like it, if people want to see your stuff, where can they? Yeah, great question. We're, we're obviously um, trying to get it to a place where it can stream. Um, it, it means a few re-edits on my part, but um, if you just want to buy a good old-fashioned physical copy um, for when the internet finally goes down forever. <laughs> okay. A little fear-mongering there. Buy our movie. Um, but yeah, just like on, we're, we're on Facebook. We're we got sniped on Instagram for, you know, whatever reason. So um, they can reach us out on Facebook and, and grab a copy. We have uh, some new batches getting ready to arrive. But uh, right now, just Blu-ray and hopefully in the future, Tubi or uh, future Shutter. Okay. So yeah. so uh, Midnight Film Company on Facebook? That's yep. correct. The Midnight yep. Film Company, yep. you got it. All right. Um Sounds awesome. I, I will keep an eye on you guys because I'm was i a really cool. big fan. Um that's awesome, man. Thank um, you. Yeah, man. Thank you. I guess, Bobby, Bobby anything else you want to throw at him? Um, Wrap it up, Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'm excited to see more from you guys, absolutely, because yes. I loved everything about that, about <laughs> Satanic Soccer Moms. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I got a couple questions I had. Um, where were some of the locations that you picked other than, like, uh, the ones we discussed, the house and some of the, so like, the soccer fields and the bars? Yeah, like uh, my mom's house, uh, a local <laughs> wood fire pizza restaurant okay. for the when when the devil and and Jack are doing all the cocaine and playing Candyland. Uh, our buddies, our buddies' bar here. We're, we're, everything was shot here in Delaware, Ohio. So yeah, just, just north okay. of Columbus, like you said. Annie's house was was my personal house, you know, and then like. Right. Fields and stuff are straight around us up here in Delaware. So. Any place okay. that's dumb enough to let us in, <laughs> we will go and yeah. shoot something. You, you there. do it. Um, we, yeah. we try to, we, we obviously have just been writing, I would say very, um, you know, method to what is in <laughs> our town. It's available to us. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll think like, oh my gosh, we totally can shoot inside there. So we'll have to just write a piece that's happening in there. Um, so yeah, we have like a, a, a pretty nice community of people who are just willing to open up their spaces that are what, what we like to call RTS ready to shoot. Like, you know, <laughs> okay. out, like yeah. I walk to my mom's house and it just looks like it's straight out of a magazine. I don't have to do anything or, you know, hire a production designer. <laughs> like that's just a fantasy for us. It takes a lot of the fun away too. You know, uh, we just sort of try to put people in spaces that are, like I said, RTS, and they can just kind of feel it and know where they are um, instead of trying to create a faux space and, and, and try to play in that area. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I loved it. And, uh, and talking to you guys more, I love that you guys literally work with what you have and you make it work. Exactly. It's, it's a great job, yeah. Absolutely. The problem solvers, Bobby. Yeah, I mean, yeah. for... <laughs> To, to go from making a, a movie on an iPhone 8, which was night work, to making a movie on an iPhone 12 and getting nominated for Best Feature at Horror Hound says a lot about just the technology gap there that can cover um, going against cameras that are shot on the black magic cinema camera or the Aries. Yeah. And you don't, the, the festival is basically saying by allowing us in and then nominating with us with that sort of prestigious award that we don't care what you shoot on. We just want to see original good, like storytelling. Our movie doesn't sound as good, look as good as some of the other projects that we were nominated against, but the festival was open-minded enough to look at it as a, a fair shake. And I think that should be a big sign for people to start picking up things and creating content for these festivals and, and become a part of the community. And like Bob said earlier, yeah, you can kind of see like, yeah, the passion behind it. Like we just we love doing this. We're not we're not making any money off of this. You know, what I mean, yeah. we have full time jobs. We do this, you know, on weekend when we're free to get this done. But we just love we just love doing it. It's it's there's there's nothing more fun you can do to make a movie, in my opinion. No, oh, yeah, I could tell everyone was having fun while making it too. Good, good. Oh yeah, oh absolutely. You know, and a lot of that stuff. And I will tell you that uh, in parting words, a, a lot of those shots, I would say ninety percent of them were one 
over maybe two, two yeah. takes. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Because Brian was so great and Grace was so great that, you know, when you put him in makeup and you sort of turn him loose, mm -hmm. it's just like, you know, it's not going to get better than the first or second time, especially with no. him and, and her. They just had such a natural chemistry. So it, it made our job very easy when you hire those kind of people like Ellie Church and Jason Crow um, to Gilbert. come in yeah. and just knock it out of the park. And just, just, play, and just play with us and just have point, fun. Point and shoot, really, when it comes <laughs> yeah. to that kind of talent. <laughs> so, yeah. So uh, I actually, uh, one of your answers recently kind of inspired one of the questions I, I had on my mind. Um, what inspired the choice of Candyland to be essentially like the devil's game here? <laughs> yeah, I just think it was a game you didn't have to explain yeah, to an like, audience visually. Everyone gets it. It's like, a, it's, it's like the dumbest game ever. Yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah. It's like, there's no skill at all. It's just, zero it's skill. Yeah. And the fact that the devil would like bet all of these things. Like, yeah. It's yeah. Like, you know, play Candyland, but your soul? Sure. Um, Candyland. Yeah. And I think it's like I said, just visually. Uh, you don't have to explain anything, you know, and um, yeah, why not that one? <laughs> and plus, it's just, yeah, it's just fun to shoot. It's ready to shoot. It is. Ready. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, thank you guys so much for joining yes, us. It's fun you talking to you guys. This is you as well, awesome. man. Appreciate it, guys. Thank um, you so much. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and just real quick, I'll throw out my, my invitation. If you guys want to uh, shoot me an email when your new project's coming out and, and you can come on and promote it. Um, absolutely do that um appreciate that but yeah yeah guys uh have a good one have a good take day. care guys you know all that stuff thanks yeah. guys appreciate it yeah man absolutely good luck with the podcast man i love the production value it's phenomenal oh well thank you well, ed harris dancing sells anything <laughs> yeah, ed, yeah yeah i meant to warn you guys i hope you guys are okay with ed harris dancing absolutely who isn't man it's all Come good on. yeah national treasure hey you see that hey. he was in that movie the second one all right, all right bye you ciao guys <laughs> <laughs> yep, have a good one. <laughs> Take care. All right. So our our our, our next uh, uh, topic will be uh, uh, Godzilla X Kong. Um, I need to get set up for this because uh, my daughter my daughter is going to discuss this uh, with us. So okay. uh, give give me one moment, and I will be right back. Mm. All right. So I'll just talk aimlessly while this is going on then. <laughs> Oh, I, I, I want to be aimless, Bobby. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, patterns and strokes of hate, the fa the fabric of our lives. <laughs> uh, I, I'll just explain why I'm not going to be joining in on this. I was unable to uh, check it out due to some uh, unfortunate circumstances, but uh, I honestly feel after uh, watching. Minus one, I don't really need to see another Godzilla movie ever again, unless they make a sequel to that one. Those are my thoughts on it. But Bob is setting up more on this. I think he's going to get the kiddo involved, because I believe he probably saw, or she probably saw that with him. So it should be good. But we did put the link to uh, the Midnight Film Company on Facebook in the chat, so if anyone in the chat wants to check their out, check out their cup movies. I highly recommend you do. It, they're it was really entertaining, thoroughly hilarious, and just kind of campy enough that it's just so enjoyable that definitely has high rewatch value. Oh, silly things of the corporate world. Where, where's the endless chatter, Bobby? What the hell? Oh, I, I had just stopped momentarily. <laughs> oh, jeez. I insane. got an email from work, and I just had to roll my eyes and live react to it. <laughs> I guess my, my daughter wants to hear. What's up, kid? Hi. Uh... <laughs> Hi. So Bobby didn't get around to seeing Godzilla X Kong, you slacker. Because reasons. This is the best Godzilla movie I've seen um, since Godzilla Minus One, which so this is was the last Godzilla movie we've vastly, seen. <laughs> vastly better. But um, real initial thoughts, I thought this was fine. 
Okay. It, was, it was totally fine. Um, I thought it was okay. Yeah, yeah. It was okay. Like, if you're looking for me to be like, oh, my God, you know, it's definitely a movie where I don't have a strong emotional connection to it. Um, like, I don't, like, it, like <laughs> technically, I don't have any issue with it. But I will say I can break down this this story into three parts. There is a God or King Kong story that is probably the best story where it's almost silent, but you have Godzilla essentially doing the salt, trying to figure out this mystery in the hollow earth. Um, you know, he there's there's he's finding like evil apes who are just being jerks to him, he's tracking them down. And that is probably the best story. And then you have the the second story, well, my second favorite, which is probably the human story. Which is obviously a lot of exposition because they can actually talk and explain stuff with Kong. We're just kind of doing a visual story with him. Um, and that's okay. They do an all right job. I think uh, it's mainly Rebecca Hall, Brian Tyree Henry, and um, Dan Stevens. And they're all very capable actors. And they do a good job. And then we have... The Godzilla story, which is Godzilla doing stuff. Yeah, Godzilla <laughs> is, number one, not in this actually a whole lot. It, this is a lot of Kong, which I don't really complain about because I... I thought Kong Skull Island was underrated. Um, there are issues with that, but I, I enjoy it. Um, but um, yeah, the Godzilla story is almost nothing. The Godzilla story is him walking around and getting powers and charging up and humans explaining that that's what he's doing. And then that's it. Like the, Basically the entire time with yeah. Kong, it's like a bunch of people up an airplane be like, oh my goodness. He's beating up Rome. Oh, no, oh my goodness. He's going to, he's gonna go and, and fight that really territorial yeah. titan in the ocean. Yeah, that which which is pink, like a five, two minute fight. That has <laughs> pink energy. Oh my goodness, he is defeating the Titan and he now has pink energy. Yeah. A and then it yeah. That's the whole that, Godzilla story. I then. I did it. I yeah. I did all of it. Yeah. For you. <laughs> but like with with Kong, like we actually can kind of follow a motivation, like you know, he's finding apes which he's been lonely, so he wants to find apes, but, like, these apes are assholes and jerks, and he's trying to figure out what the heck, why are these people jerks? And we can follow that, we empathize that, and we're cool, and then Godzilla is just getting powers from creatures, and we, like, we're just told that there, there's this big, bad monster coming out, but we don't know anything about it. Godzilla basically just spends, like, the, the most mm. of the movie just, like, kicking butt for mm -hmm. no discernible reason. And I'll, maybe that was done purposely on the filmmakers part to focus mainly on kong because let's face it um godzilla minus one did just come out and they might be like yeah we we, we don't want to harken back that too much because holy shit <laughs> the good godzilla yeah. movie was already made if you yeah. try to focus in too much on godzilla it's just going to be like too much like people are going to compare it because they came out so near to each other yes mm. and you don't want to be compared to godzilla minus one because it's not going to make you look Good. No, no. Oscar Godzilla was insane. Oscar yeah. winning Godzilla God's... minus one. I want to say Godzilla minus one was only nominated in one category and it won it. Criminally nominated yeah. in one category. Yes. Godzilla minus one wasn't just good as like a Godzilla movie good. It was just like good as a movie. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It was, um, it was it was nice. So I guess my review of Godzilla X Kong is just watch Godzilla minus one. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 well, that's the thing. So when it comes to this franchise, this monster franchise, I think they've done an okay job of all these film studios make trying to make these big Marvel franchises. I feel like this is probably one of the more successful ones. Um, in that, like. They haven't really crapped the bed in any, with any of these movies because most of them open the gate and just shit the bed. Um, Tom Cruise's The Mummy comes to mind. Uh, we we um, don't talk about that. Yeah, we don't talk about we don't that. Talk like, about that. Beautiful. Dude, nah. Dracula Untold sucked, but was somehow way better than Tom Cruise's The Mummy. <laughs> well, so he wanted bad. to turn that into a Mission Impossible movie. Yeah, well, he wanted it to be like a Marvel movie. It's like, no, don't do that. <laughs> We're building a franchise, right? It needs to be like Marvel, and I need to no. like, and I need to be in a plane that's crashing. Mm -hmm. I don't even know, but uh, yeah. So uh, yeah. So what? I'm trying to remember. So like, there's 2014's Godzilla, which was fine. It was another fine one. There's Kong Skull Island, which I kind of enjoyed, and then there was Godzilla King of the Maya Monsters. As I recall, that was decent. It's been a while since so I've seen it. And then we got Kong v Godzilla, and 
I feel like that and Kong X Godzilla are kind of almost the same quality wise. So I guess if you like versus, this will be well, I don't kind know, of more man. the same. I, I've but, seen like a Godzilla versus King Kong that was fucking great. That actually has two different versions. I I I haven't seen that many. So. It's an old. It's I, the older ones back when it was a yeah. guy in a suit. That the total like, ones. The, yeah, yeah. The one now, the one that was released here in the states, King Kong one. The one that was released mm -hmm. over in Japan, Godzilla one. Because you mm -hmm. know, they can't have their boy losing. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's the one also where Khan got super drunk off the berries. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. But yeah, I, I as, judging from the American ones, like I said, like uh, Godzilla minus one was only my second of the the Toho Godzilla movies that I've okay. actually seen. What's, what's your first? Godzilla nineteen fifty four. Okay, got it. <laughs> Which is actually, yeah. I first cannot stress one. this enough. A hundred percent decent movie. Yes, the effects are dated, but like yeah, it's a it's really so good, good looking movie. It's yeah, really good. I, I cannot recommend it enough. Um, it's almost as good as the monster from Prehistoric Planet. We don't talk about the monster from prehistoric. <laughs> well, the monster from prehistoric planet is beautiful, Father. It's art. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's got like the chicken lizard, man. She likes to watch uh, a great trash with me sometimes. I do like to watch great trash. It's <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. So yeah, like I guess I don't have any like. I thought this was fine. This was a fine movie. <clears throat> Yeah, I don't have anything really huge to say about. It. I liked the Kong stuff, and then the human stuff was fine, and then the Godzilla stuff was kind of forgettable. But you know, we can't not have Godzilla in a movie called Godzilla X Kong, where he's pretty much the lead in the title. Um, I mean, we could just be goofy for a little bit if you don't know what to say. Yeah, <laughs> hmm? we could just be goofy if you don't. To say. You want to be goofy? Like we can be goofy. We can be goofy. About it. Oh, okay. Well, let's, let's well be goofy. How, okay. What do you want to be goofy with? <laughs> was there anybody who was way too into the movie when you saw it, like cheering? Uh, <laughs> like, I, I, yeah. I, I I didn't notice anything like that. No. To be honest with you, it just kind of seemed. I, I think every now and then I I, I notice someone you know. Having a good little chuckle, but mm -hmm. like besides that, it was it's pretty silent mm -hmm. in the movie theater. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> so, unlike the the title, they never ship. Yeah, I was. They never to, hook up. It's was, very disappointing. I was about yeah, no. I know. Before we went, you, you were like, "Would you want to see Godzilla X Kong?" And I was like, "I'm sorry, is it actually called Godzilla X Kong?" <laughs> I had to explain <laughs> shipping terminology. Yeah, no, I didn't course. know that. I, with, I assumed it meant crossover, but yeah. Pro yes, it does mean crossover, and I'm certain that's what they mean because that's more of like the business way to like indicate a crossover is to put an X between the two things. And Godzilla and Kong are basically brands at this point. Mm -hmm. I would argue. And yeah. I don't know if they're technically brands, but they're basically brands. They're brands in many of the ways that matter. <laughs> and yeah. You, but you see, when you put an X between, like, two, like, fictional characters' names, that often means that you're shipping them. And so, I, obviously, I had to watch the movie from that perspective, because, like, when you name a movie that, that's the only perspective that you can watch it in. Uh, Chuck, there, I, I've had um, bowel movements better than Roland Emmerich's Godzilla from 1998. I'm just going to say it. Um, that was atrocious, man. I mean... That is a low bar. <laughs> like, I guess I probably haven't seen that. Though. Hank Azaria was in there, and he tried. He tried to save that oh, movie. Oh, no, they have some very talented actors in there, but oof. Oof. I love the, 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 baby, the baby Godzillas that totally aren't ripping off the raptors at the end. That totally aren't great. raptors? Yeah, that was totally our Raptors. But uh, yeah, the, those guys can open doors. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, Godzilla X Kong. I guess like if you're wondering if, if you should go see it, I'd say if you've been enjoying the MonsterVerse so far, yeah, go check that. Go uh, check it. I out. mean, the the romance is, is palpable. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, if you're not super engaged with this MonsterVerse, I don't know. Um, Go watch Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. That was underrated. Yeah, I'll agree. 
Was that the one that you saw? Yeah. I like wasn't here. Yeah, because it was getting oh, bad reviews. And I was like, okay, I'll, I guess I'll just go by myself. We're busy this weekend with the horror hound. I'll just go by myself after the kids get picked up. Um, and then I watch it and went, this is decent. Why is this getting bad reviews? I don't get it. All right. Um, chuds. <laughs> chuds are going to chud. That's why. That's yeah. true. They were trying to say it's woke, even though, like, there isn't a lesbian what? romance. Like, I kind of feel like what? it. Wait, but, yeah. wait, 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 what? <laughs> there, was sub, there was subtextual lesbians in there? A little bit, yeah. And I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, comedian, you say you want a fake biopic? Like, uh, like the Weird Al movie. Mm -hmm. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I mean, yeah. about the guy in the suit. <laughs> about the guy in the yeah, suit. I mean, I think a real one could be interesting, but a fake one. Well, I'm they've made a, they've already done the fake music biopic before. They did Walk Hard, John C. Riley. That's true. And that is, and that like kind of changed the way music biopics are made now because no one really follows that formula anymore, mm -hmm. except for Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, I was about right to say Bohemian Rhapsody is the most formulaic one. Like, I love Queen's music, and that got me through that movie. And Rami Malek does a good job, but yeah, <laughs> I don't know that. And that... it was directed by no one; it just came into existence, which is the amazing thing about it. <laughs> yeah. We don't see a, we don't say his name. <laughs> yeah. No. Um. Um. But yes, uh, I guess do we want to move on to uh, what we got? Oh yeah, X Men, the last half of season three. Yeah. Yes, yes. I mean, I saw this when I was very young, so I can nod. Yes, you remember it very well, I actually. Can, I yeah. can nod and and smile and uh, chuckle randomly to throw you guys off. I mean, if you guys want, you can uh -huh. see what I've been looking at off screen. Um, it's a bit distracting because IMDb has those little trailers, and half the time I'm not even sure. Like, I think I'm safe to not get copyrighted, but it does scare me. But um, we're screen sharing. Yes. That is what, that is what I'm looking off and seeing. <laughs> um, but yeah, this, so this oh, go ahead, Bobby. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, this later end of it was really good. Yeah, well, a few stinkers, well, but it, good. Yeah, they overall do a really good job of Dark Phoenix. I feel like that one kind of carries us half the season, um, despite the limited animation. Like that story is just sh so good. And they do a decent job adapting it. And it's fairly comic accurate. Although, a little gripe. And I know they complain about not being able to say... The, like, uh, interviews have come out with the creators of the original animated series talking about how there's certain words they can't use. I'm guessing one of them's hell. Because uh, instead of the, the inner circle of the Hellfire Club manipulating Jean as a phoenix and kind of getting her to become Dark Phoenix, it is the inner circle club manipulating her and getting her to become dark phoenix um you know it's the inside of the circle yeah inside you, you, the circle. You, you, you know the one you know it's, the circle yeah. yeah it's the inner circle bob the inner yeah. circle yeah no but when they first saw that sign it's like inner circle and they just called inner circle i'm like what is that like are they gonna mention hellfire club and nope yeah no, no that's the whole time like okay yeah. so yeah the hellfire club all right cool yeah well, we're just going to call it the inner circle. It's for kids, so, you know, it's, it's don't want to terrify him too much. Of a circle. Yeah, the inside yeah. of a circle. The well, inner. I'm tainting her mind right now by saying Hellfire Club. It's it's sad. Is yeah. your mind tainted? My brain is slowly melting out through my ear sockets. Yeah. It's just gonna, You're like, warping her fragile little mind. It's like, you know, pink clay, as it often does. <laughs> she can't handle fucking bad language like hell. I mean, it's really yes. bad language. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm a terrible fuck. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, well, the no, fire. No, no, been... no, Bob. Nice. <laughs> there's there's, there's yeah, worse, there's worse the dads than you, club. man. There's worse dads than you. There's Joe Jackson. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who Joe Jackson is, but I agree. Mm -hmm. Michael Jackson's father. Um, oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that guy seemed unpleasant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, he was they could have called it the poopy pants club. That would be they serious could have. and scary. Or they yeah. could have called it the uh the uh oh Hot fire I club. <laughs> I just no, I just had it. Um they call it the like sinister the seven. 
they could call it like the state of past curfew club to you know show oh. <laughs> The uh, the infamous and furious alliance. <laughs> Let me see. So, like, I feel like this half of the season was really dominated by that Dark Phoenix song. Yeah, it, it, it really definitely. Was. There's little things that but I, bug me. I really enjoyed I Savage say, Land, Savage Heart, that... Part One and Two. Yeah, that was decent too. And then the Cold other comfort one, wasn't well, the bad. thing I wanted to, I'm going to bring it back to, to um, Dark Phoenix, because um, I did think it was funny when the X-Men die. Um, so in the comic book, the X-Men die in that, that battle with the Shi'ar. They're, they're yeah. all dead, and Jean Grey essentially <laughs> gives her life to bring him back to life. Um, but here, like Storm and Gambit, kind of, uh, they get knocked out, but they're clearly still alive. But then, then Wolverine is apparently killed, and then Rogue is apparently killed, and then Beast just flips away. I, I, I rewound it just to see. Wait, yeah, what he back flipped his way out of there. <laughs> yeah, Jean was saying, "Oh my God, all the I can't contact any of the X Men." She was acting just like they were when Morph died, when they don't say he died, but it's like we can't, I can't contact him. Jean was saying that, and I was like, "Wait, did they all die?" And like, I rewound it because the only ones I remember were Wolverine and Rogue. And like, yeah, Storm and Gambit, kinda, but it's clear they're not dead. And then, uh, and then Beast, yeah, he's he's just she's just not counting him. She just said, oh, "Fuck Beast." He's I don't care about that one. You know, no, this is why I always tell you to do a backflip because if you do enough backflips, you could get your way out of anything. True. This is true. Yes. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, you brought up cold comfort, and that was a uh, that was okay in my opinion it that, felt out of a, place though it did feel out of place so that's the the ice man comes back he's one of the original x-men but scott doesn't like him because he he's a rogue um but yeah uh he's got he such a boy scout <laughs> yeah he retired so he could be with lorna aka Pol Pol uh, polaris aka magneto's daughter but they don't go into that here um but she decides she wants to go back and fight the mutants. So she joins a mutant organization called X Factor. Um, Scott encounters Havoc, but they don't know each other. Um, we kind of get all of X Factor using the X badge logo, but like they don't know anything about it. And I do think it's interesting how they're X Factor. Um, I guess they're named after Xavier as well. Um, and if like, here they're just a government agency, but if you know anything about the history of the team, that was uh, essentially when the the, the original X-Men was canceled and they came back in giant size X-Men, the new team was like Wolverine, Nightcrawler, uh, Colossus, Storm, um, Sunfire, and I want to say I'm probably forgetting somebody, um, but that was like the new team. And when that team took off and was successful, um, they launched X Factor, which was literally just the original X Men team in New Adventures. So it made sense for them to still have the X. Here they're just yeah. a government team. It's like, oh, that's a change. <laughs> and yeah, I have no idea why they're called X in that one. Um, and then, yeah, look, IMDb is off because Disney Plus puts them in the order they are supposed to air in instead of um, what was actually produced. Um, but yeah, um, let's see. So Savage Land, Savage Heart. But yeah, that, those were decent. Um, and then what else do we have? Orphan's um, End. Old Comfort. Orphan's There's... End. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was the one with, uh, yeah, Scott's, uh, Scott's dad. Where it's established that it's his dad. Um, Did, but didn't they establish that earlier in the series? That's the thing. Like, season? I don't think they did, and I just I remember him. Being they made dad. mention or teased it in. Uh, oh, they definitely teased it, but I don't think they episode they six, uh, the Phoenix Saga Part Four, uh, yeah, Star where we were, Yeah, where we first meet them. Yeah. I think they definitely do that, but and uh, Love yeah, and Vain was, was kind of was uh, a weird one. Love and Vain to end the season on was a bit rough and i felt like that would yes. be like a cool one because it's like okay rogues dealing with you know not being able to be with anybody and 
you know, she sees uh, Cyclops and Jean being happy together, and it, it, it frustrates her because she can't have that. But then, like, her ex-boyfriend calls her, and he's, well, uh, fun fact, the ex-boyfriend that she had her first kiss with, who she put into a coma, who later dies in a comic book, but here she he doesn't die because they don't really kill off people here. Um, but, yeah, he, he calls it her, and then... She, there's a thing where these aliens are able to nullify her powers so she can touch him. And she thinks, Oh wow. You know, I can be with him and I'm still in love with him. And yeah. Um, it's, it's fine. It's fine. Are you bored out of your mind? I just don't know what's happening. Yeah. We're talking about love and vain. <laughs> I'll, check, I'll check in when I can. Okay. I was going to be like, they named it the X factor after the, the hit TV show, but then you kept on talking and I couldn't get my joke in. Yes, definitely named so, after the hit TV show that yeah, came out right. after this was made. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, it was... Yeah, I did not like it, because the whole thing was actually just an alien plot. <laughs> A wonky alien plot. Um, her boyfriend, like, Wolverine got fighting the aliens, and he slowly became an alien, and then all the X-Men become aliens. It's it's dumb. It's dumb. But yeah. I believe you. Yes. <laughs> like so essentially for me, uh Savage Land, Savage Hearts okay. Um, and then Dark Phoenix. Pretty pretty fucking good for, for the second half of season three. Um do we want to do Discovery? Yes. Yeah, let's I, you I saw Discovery. Talk about Discovery yes. I watched Discovery. You watched it, you watched yeah. the first five episodes of Discovery. So I have want I have like I'm not a huge fan of Discovery season one. That being said, I thought the first five episodes were fine. Yeah. Um I think like, it little thing I will sit critique it for is I feel it's a little bit off because you almost have like this pilot two parter that feels a bit disconnected from the series as a whole. And Part of me kind of wishes they had like folded that into the series later, done like almost like a menagerie thing with the, like they did in the original series. But then another part of me kind of likes separating it out so you're not 100 sure where the series is going. So I guess at the end of the day, I'm not sure if they handled it the best way or or not. But it was okay, and it does. My biggest issue with that two parter is that it makes it feel like a bit more of a Michael show than I think they intended because I think it's. Like, as the series progresses, it feels more and more ensemble. But it definitely feels like the Michael show at this point. I which... can tell you, I didn't think of it as being an ensemble show at all. Yeah, it We're felt... dealing with Michael and all of her problems. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, we get a little bit with the characters outside. I mean, that, that the last episode had a lot of uh, Lorca being kidnapped by the Klingons. We got, like, a little bit of her roommate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's, there's some people. Yeah, well, I mean, there, there's a lot of people you see every episode that you don't even know the name of. Like, there's the one that uh, that is actually on the first ship. She's in, like, all the episodes, but she has, like, no role. And you just see her as a normal human, and then you see her on the second ship, and she's, like, a cyborg. And it's it's like she must have gotten injuries in that Klingon battle. Yeah. And then the other character is Saru, which is, you know, you get plenty of Saru, and he's cool. And I'm cool to see Doug Jones in anything, frankly. Um, Bobby, I don't think you've seen this before. What are your thoughts? Uh, I I enjoyed this. Um, mm -hmm. I had heard some uh, iffiness about it before. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, eh, it's like, it's okay. It's okay. But most of the negativity I, I had read from it was just from, you know, Chud reviewers. Yeah, they, and, they, and they that, can't get like that. Yeah, yeah, you know, like they just get angry yeah. that there's a woman in charge, and you know, they just, yeah, they just forget about Voyager. But hey, that's none of my business. Mm. Uh, hey, Sunny Dark, what's up? Yeah, so fun chat. Fact, Star Trek. Star Trek was always woke. Um, yeah, you know, just the like the X Men. Woke. Just yes. like <laughs> the X Men. Yeah, shocking. Yeah, I know. but um, I yeah, know. I did like how they so carried so over <laughs> from one to another. I really mm -hmm. liked that, and I mean, most of Star Trek does that, and they always have. But like uh, the first two episodes, I think it really just kind of hooks you into Discovery, mm -hmm. and kind of uh, like I really like what they're doing with like the molecule storyline and how they're controlling that and. 
That's really cool. And I really mm -hmm. like the design of the Klingons in this. I really not like really. That. I'm I'm not a Seizure fan, although I do think it does serve the purpose of making him more alien. Yeah. Of course, it does get confusing when when essentially uh, Strange New Worlds kind of reverts them back to a bit more what they look like before. Well, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm used to seeing the curly hair and everything, yeah. but um, I'm just presuming that maybe they are diehards. Okay, well, where does this take place in the timeline? Pre uh, around pre 10 years before series? the original series. Yeah, because I saw when they, like, um, they had... Um, yes, well, Sarek uh, is in, it in probably like three episodes. No, those. not Sarek, not Sarek. Um, oh. The alien first mate on the new ship. Oh, uh, Saru? Yeah, Saru, yes. Mm -hmm. Where uh, he asked, like, the greatest captains living, or living in the Federation, and one of them yeah. was Pike. Yeah. And I was like, okay, so this kind of helps me place where in the timeline it kind of is, sort of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they need but, drop everyone they could. They could, yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Um, the uh, head engineer, the actor, Anthony Rapp, I'm like actually yeah. a very big fan of his. Oh, so yeah. when I saw his name on the credits or like the, the cast, I was like, oh, okay. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, no, he, his character is one of the more interesting ones because I, I find him, part of me finds him kind of insufferable and part of me also kind of likes him because like I get where he's coming from. What was your take on him? I'm kind of... I, I don't think I... Mm -hmm. He's he's okay. Yeah, well, he's, he's okay. okay. I didn't have... He, it's like I understand why he's upset, mm -hmm. but he is just kind of annoying and a bit of a jerk sometimes yes you know? he is very and much so i'm so. just not you know like i feel well, like if i'm to empathize with him it's going to happen later <laughs> yeah well that, <laughs> I, I kind of more. i like how so. culver treats him too and you'll see more yeah. of that throughout the series because culver is just like this nice mellow dude <laughs> i've seen a chunk uh, i wouldn't say all of his work but i've seen a good portion of it mm -hmm. never seen him play a jerk like this before so i'm actually just enjoying that yeah does he normally play like a very sweet guy? Yeah, actually. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, have you seen Dazed and Confused? Have I seen Dazed and Confused? Yes. I don't you think know, so. It's been I'm forever asking, since I've seen it. You know, and... If I'm asking it, that means that it doesn't matter because I clearly don't remember. <laughs> yeah. <it now. laughs> uh, he was uh, one of the nerdy kids, and well, not really nerdy because every kid in there, there was different cliques, but they all still knew each other and hung out. But uh. The blonde guy out of the nerdy bunch, the one with Adam Goldberg. It's been too long. There are too Watch many it. blonde guys. It's been at Watch least it 10 again. years. It's been in like Watch it again, Bob. I, I, You'll see I him immediately. I'm confused I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, rewatching it at Modern Lens, it, there's some stuff that is that isn't so great. But uh, Oh, dear. <laughs> there's one Don't Matthew McConaughey live. Don't... No, there is one Matthew McConaughey line that's a little uh. uh. Well, Matthew McConaughey can kick kind of uh. <laughs> yeah. Listen, man, he just loves his Lincoln, okay? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, so, like, um, I guess it's talking about uh, lines, what do you guys think of the Elon Musk line? <laughs> I, I don't even know why people thought that he was cool back then. As far as I know, he's just like a rich man that owns a company. I just remember when I first heard that line where he's like, uh, you, we have, we, you have to be like the great thinkers of the, of the future, like, like the Wright brothers, uh, Zephron Cochran and Elon Musk. And even at the time I was like, eh. like there was a Honestly, better, I ever thought about in his life. There was a better image Other of him than back himself. Because he, yeah, it was like the electric car guy. So like there's a better image of him back then, but even back then, like there's some stuff on him where I was like, he's not such a great guy. I don't know if you should be name dropping him. I, and I, now I, it's dated terribly because oh my yeah, god, Elon, Elon Musk, Musk is sucks. a very special man. <laughs> <laughs> um he, he, that man doesn't know podcast, how to properly wear a I, cowboy I hat, but <laughs> yeah. That's everything you need to know about Elon Musk. Elon he, Musk he walked around like, the border I, wearing a cowboy hat backwards. Around a bunch of people who wear them regularly, and mm. nobody told him that he was wearing it backwards. The dude, <laughs> yeah, 
he 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 sank his fortune into Twitter and he's making it shitty. And I'm not calling it X. It is Twitter because no no. If he can't acknowledge if he can't acknowledge his trans kid's real name, then I'm gonna call Twitter by its dead name. True, true. There's that too. And also, I just don't respect him at all. <laughs> yeah, no, I I, I don't. I, I think he is. Um, I remember when he rose to, I guess, first popularity in the American zeitgeist of mm -hmm. pop culture. Uh, I think that, uh, I don't know, my first thing was like, look at him going, so what has he done? Well, he's rich. Okay, so what does he do? But he's mm -hmm. rich, man. Okay. What does he do? Oh, no, you don't get it, dude. He's just mm -hmm. rich, and he's really awesome. Okay. Mm -hmm. This guy screams Bond villain to me. So no. Yeah, he does. <laughs> I always found it interesting how his hair grew in as he got older. Like he just, it, it's an interesting twist. <laughs> Andy, you think Twitter is better now than before? No. Nah, we can address that. Yeah, Andy. Um, I don't know. It is nice that Nazis have a place to play, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, it, it, everyone has a... Place. Yeah, like, yeah, they can. They have a place to, you know, spread their hatred and vileness. That that that's a good thing, I guess. I mean, I've gotten very liberal with the block button on Twitter at this point. Um, I mean, yeah, but I'm still surprised that even though I, I don't follow hardly any uh, like mouthpieces of the other side, they are certainly recommended to me in great length. Yes. Yes, very much so. And I just have fun trolling that comment section. Mm -hmm. I I don't think I've seen have I seen either machete movie? I it's been uh, years. Uh, I don't even rem I don't even that's remember. Right. I, was, I that. was about ready to say was Machete one of the ones in the Grindhouse, but no, Machete was a, a fake trailer in Grindhouse that became which real. they've made movies out of almost all of them, but one. Oh, have they? Yeah. I just thought there was just Machete. Mm. Hobo with a shotgun was a trailer in there, and they made really two okay. Movie. Yeah, it's been a while since I've done the, the Grindhouse. Um, but uh, that I think the last one is like Werewolf Nazis or something like that. <laughs> The one they need to make. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like this, the first five episodes of, of Discovery, I know I have issues with this season, but we don't haven't really gotten to them yet. This is this kind of like Star Trek after what? I guess only a year after uh, uh, Star Trek Beyond. But, you know, a long time since we've been in the prime timeline. And, you know, they're just doing a darker version of Star Trek. And at this point, it's decent, I think. I think they do a all right job. Yeah, um, I, I will say the first curse bomb that dropped, it did kind of take me back for a second. I was like, what? Yeah. Did they just... Yeah, that was the first F-bomb in Star Trek franchise history. <laughs> I was like, did they just drop an F-bomb? <laughs> like... Mm -hmm. Then the episode was R-rated. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, well, I mean, I think that was also the same episode that it, that finally introduced the first same-sex couple in Star Trek, which was, frankly, long overdue. I mean, that was something um, yeah. Gene Roddenberry was talking about regretting not doing in TNG. Just, just saying. I mean, <laughs> it's proving once it's again that it's same-sex couple, but I know what you no, mean. No, yeah, well, the first, um, yeah, I guess the first characters I identify as queer. Um, because, yeah, Jadzia never identifies as queer, but she pretty much is. She's bi. <laughs> and do they, like, say it out loud? Is that, like, the... the, 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 the I'm forgetting I guess the they one. don't. Because I feel like if it's there, then it's there. Yeah, like, now, now you're throwing me for because, a loop. Like, okay? I, I, I don't... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're throwing me for a loop, because you're technically right. So, the second same-sex couple in Star Trek history... Oh, oh the no, not even the first regular. Okay, never mind. I'm wrong. <laughs> Second same sex couple in Star Trek history. Um, you are correct. You you've gotten me. Jezia Dax it's, did beat them to it like 20 years earlier. <laughs> it's true. I'm always right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so the first few episodes are solid. Um, and the first F bomb in Star Trek history was definitely the most controversial thing ever this series did, and the only thing that Chuds talk about. 
Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I, I, I can I can hear them. The I can hear the rage boner <laughs> screech now. But yeah, uh, so yeah, um, I will have complaints come later, but uh, so far, good. But not um, next week, because we're yeah, next week. Back to... Yeah, next week. What do we have lined up next week? There we we have, have another video. guest next week. That's uh, right. We're looking at uh, the filmmaker behind uh, uh, Dead Men Ride Again. Dead Men Ride Again. Maybe I will cue that up and we can end on that because that. that cool little trailer um and then yeah so we'll talk to uh, uh the filmmaker behind that and then we'll talk to oh, talk to and then uh oh yeah we're covering that one uh dev patel movie that looks cool monkey man um you know I just we're also that. covering uh invincible season two part two yes Yes, Which I need. I want to double check, make sure that was coming out. So that might switch out unless yes, it's it out. is actually it's out. out. It's um, out. It is out. out. Okay. All right. And, and we're then, also oh, covering one of my hero. personal favorite movies. Yeah. Last mm-hmm. Action Hero. Nice, nice. Um, one that I know I've never seen one, it before, and it's always been yeah, on one, one I've wanted to see. That I'm surprised that you have never seen this movie. As someone who was like a diehard Arnold Schwarzenegger fan, it's like, kind of seriously? shocking. I've seen some stinkers. I've seen some stinkers. And, and, well, I've seen love... Hercules in New York. Woof. <laughs> Have you seen Pumping Iron? Um. Yeah, more or less. I mean, that's a fine movie, but I mean, it's yeah, it's more it's, of a documentary. It's a doc. Yeah. And you, you you've heard about how he feels when he's pumping that last set, and that's pretty much the only the reason why you would need to watch. Yeah. That movie. <laughs> um. <laughs> I've like there's that the villain, which sounds like a really fun movie. Um, but well, like, the villain is played great. by Charles Dance, and um, it's in well, my the opinion, villain last action hero. So, like, Arnold uh, Schwarzenegger yeah. has an early movie called The Villain, um, oh. where it's him and uh, Sophia, uh, god damn it, the, the one actress, Sophia, Sophia Loren. Okay, he's like the hero, and she's like the damsel in distress, and the villain is Kurt Douglas. And when I heard that cast list, sold, like, oh. sold. Yeah, yeah, that sounds Kurt awesome, Douglas, so... and it kind of sucks. <laughs> Arnold, oh. Arnold Schwarzenegger is dreadful in it. Um, oh. It takes him a little Still. bit to find his footing. All right, well, this one he knows. I think he's very much aware that he's in an action movie. Mm-hmm. And like they very much know what they're doing in this movie. Yeah. Yes. And to be so true, and to be yep. in 1986. Truth, so so real of you to say those words of that order. Yes, I do. I saw that movie in theaters. Yes, I don't yeah. have too many memories of it. It's it. it came I knew out. he was I in saw. there. I, it was not too many memories. Yeah, yeah but yeah, I, I don't remember it at all. I think it was before you were born. Exactly. Yeah. Which makes me feel old. <laughs> yeah, makes me feel old too. Yeah, Jackie Chan. That was during Jackie Chan's peak where he was doing when he was making movies movies in this country. Now he doesn't because he hates Hollywood. He did not enjoy it. Yeah, (laughs) because he hates Hollywood. Yeah. Um. So yeah, but we got we got some cool movies coming out next week. Uh, or it's cool movies to talk about next week. Let me go ahead and get this uh queued up because this trailer is off. You know what? I actually I can just share the trailer. Hold on. Here we go. So uh, the filmmaker behind this movie will be on the podcast next week. So uh, everyone, uh, be excellent to each other and party on. Take care. Hello? Postman. That's right. Listen, Postman. Eugene City is not where you want to be right now.